What's up everybody, Dr. Rossi. It's been a minute since I've made one of these videos, but I am so happy to be back. It's good to get this underway again. So I got a good topic for you today because it's one that comes up for me in clinical practice all the time. So the story goes something like this. When I was a resident working on the inpatient service, I hated the medication aripiprazole. Now, I never thought it worked well for the patients, especially those individuals who were coming in with chronic schizophrenia or chronic bipolar disorder, the people who were so-called frequent flyers to the unit, right? So in today's video, what we're going to do is talk about the reason why this happens and what you need to understand about using partial agonists like Abilify or Aripiprazole and what we can do in clinical practice to change this situation so you can use this medication effectively for your patients. So aripiprazole was actually approved by the FDA over 20 years ago. And I know what you guys are thinking, yay, thank God aripiprazole is on the market, right? So 20 years, over 20 years ago now, aripiprazole was approved by the FDA and we now have several medications that have a similar mechanism of action. So what we're going to be able to do here is apply the information I'm giving you guys about aripiprazole also to the medications braxpiprazole and cariprazine. So we like these medications in particular because they have a lower risk for metabolic side effects. We don't like people getting fat. We don't like people having diabetes, right? We want to keep our patients healthy, both medically and mentally. Endocrine adverse effects are also very minimal. We know that Abilify can actually lower your prolactin levels for people who are using risperidone. So, we want to watch out for metabolic and endocrine abnormalities, which are very low risk with these type of medications. And there's also a much lower risk for what we would call the D2 related movement disorders, also formerly known as extrapyramidal symptoms. All right, guys, so I'm going to try to keep this as simple as possible, but it is a quite complex topic. And that what we're going to be talking about here is affinity for D2 receptors and occupancy of D2 receptors. This is really important stuff because it's gonna set the tone for everything else I'm going to explain. So in general, what we say is that partial agonist medications have what's called the highest affinity and highest occupancy for the D2 receptor of all the antipsychotics you can think of. So think of risperidol, haloperidol, whatever, or lanzapine, take your choice, right? They're all not going to have the affinity for the D2 receptor or occupancy of those D2 receptors that these partial agonist medications have. Now that's going to be really important as we explain this topic. So affinity can be thought of as how strongly these medication, medications will bind to the D2 receptors and all of these partial agonists, cariprazine, braxpiprazole, aripiprazole, all have very high affinity for dopamine D2 receptors compared to other medications such as haloperidol. So what makes aripiprazole unique compared to other antipsychotic medications? Well, most of our antipsychotic medications are going to block D2 receptors. They're going to be what we call in the business or in the industry antagonists or dopamine blockers, right? They just block D2 receptors. They don't actually have any activity at the postsynaptic receptors. Now, this is where aripiprazole is unique, as well as the other partial agonists. They are going to weakly stimulate D2 receptors even when the D2 receptors are fully occupied. So this is in contrast to medications such as haloperidol, for example, which again only blocks the D2 receptor. It does not have any stimulating effect postsynaptically at D2 receptors. Now, in anyone with psychosis, we want to avoid overstimulation of the D2 receptors, right? We wouldn't want to give somebody with a psychotic disorder a dopamine agonist medication such as primapexol, for example, right? So let's just go over briefly the differences between the full agonist, the antagonist, and the partial agonist. So the full agonist, we could think of this as intrinsic dopamine, right? Full receptor activation and neurotransmission. Now the antagonist is going to be the opposite. We could think of haloperidol here, for example, there's no receptor activity or neurotransmission that's going to occur. Now here's where it gets unique. Think of the partial agonist, aripiprazole, that's gonna have partial receptor activation and neurotransmission. Okay guys, so the biggest question we have here is why do some patients get worse when you put them on aripiprazole? 
Now this is going back to what I was originally saying that one observation clinically that I made as a resident was that aripiprazole just didn't seem that effective. And in particular, again, for those individuals who had been had received a lot of treatment, had been on a lot of medications, and were frequently in the hospital. So what happens here is some patients are going to require much lower levels of postsynaptic D2 receptor activity than others. In general, we say that 65% to 80% blockade of D2 receptors is effective for the treatment of psychosis. Now this means that 20% to 35% of postsynaptic activity is ideal for most but not all people. And that's the key point. Everybody is an N of one, as I like to say, so everybody's an individual, and everybody's body is going to respond differently to these medications. What we have to keep in mind here is that you need to sometimes go much lower postsynaptically. The postsynaptic activity must be much lower than you would otherwise think. So we know that even at the highest doses, aripiprazole will still have 25% postsynaptic activity, which again could be too much for some people. If we have a patient, for example, who's on a very high dose of risperidone, say 12 milligrams per day, they may, they may need those very low levels of postsynaptic dopamine activity to be successful treating their psychosis. So if you were to put this individual on aripiprazole, you're probably making a mistake. So it's going to be limited in that regard. We also need to consider how long aripiprazole is going to stay around in the body. Aripiprazole has a very long half-life. It's 75 hours. So this means it will take a significant amount of time, generally up to two weeks, for this to fully clear from the body. And if you were to start another medication, as I said previously, it would just be kicked off the receptors because the aripiprazole would still be bound to it. So the new medication wouldn't be able to get to the receptor to perform its action, right? So we have a huge problem there. If you start somebody on aripiprazole, in particular, if you give them a long-acting injectable and they don't respond to the medication and they need that very low postsynaptic dopamine activity, then you're going to be in a bad way for a minimal of two weeks and in the case of the injectables, even longer. What we would do in this case, you might be asking, so what's the solution, Dr. Rossi? Well, it is really simple. You're going to stop the aripiprazole. It self tapers over two weeks. It has a very long half-life, no reason to taper it. And you're going to start, say, risperidone, for example, at a reasonable dose that does not cause side effects and allow the aripiprazole to self taper. Okay, guys, so that was a good introduction to dopamine partial agonism and some of the nuanced points that you really need to know if you're going to be prescribing these medications. Now, I've actually come to a new understanding and appreciation for the medication aripiprazole. I use it quite often now, but I am more selective about which patients I use it in and how I use it. So you have to be careful, but it can be very effective and it can work well for many patients. If you guys have any questions or comments, if you have if you've watched the video all the way through, I would love to make you a subscriber to this channel. Please come back. Please drop a comment in the comment section. It really helps me to keep this thing going to know that you guys are getting value from the content we're creating. So thank you so much for watching and we have more content on the way.